What is going on, everybody? Hope you're having a good weekend. So I've been going on and on about the ROG Ally. I've been making videos left and right, mostly because I've been spending a week exclusively playing my games in silent mode. So I can find out what is the absolute best way to save the most battery while playing your ROG Ally. And there are variations of ways to make sure you're optimizing your system enough to have both great battery life and performance. And this is the first of the ROG Ally Power Saver and Performance Guide. So there are a few steps you need to go through in order to get the best performance while saving an optimal amount of battery. And usually the top way to do this is to put your ROG Ally in silent mode. So all of these games that I'm going to test have been tested exclusively in silent mode. But not only that, I put the battery profile in Windows 11 on Power Saver. So if you're not using it it turns off after every five minutes or so depending on what kind of timer you put the screensaver or sleep mode on but as a lot of you know silent mode isn't exactly what people thought it would be most people just use silent mode and power saver to surf the web or download something or even play a small indie game but that is not the main factor in order to save the most power on your rg ally there's something called memory integrity which protects your rg ally and the general os from any malicious software like malware or virus Viruses and protects your information against those threats. But as long as you're not going in any shady sites or downloading any pirated games from shady sites, as long as you're staying away from those actions, disabling integrity should be okay. So since this is the first official step, disabling memory integrity is not that hard. All you have to do is go to the start menu and search device security. Now select that and you're going to see core isolation details. Select that and you'll see the option right there, disable memory integrity and just toggle it off and Windows 11 will notify you that you need to restart your system. All you have to do is restart it and voila, your performance will be a lot better while going into silent mode or lowering your TDP to 10 watts. After disabling memory integrity, I saw a 10 to 15% performance boost with every performance profile, including turbo, performance, and especially silent mode. The system still had trouble keeping steady frames in 1080p in some cases in silent mode, so you won't be able to reach 1080 with a lot of titles since 10 watts just for the most part doesn't properly support that resolution but surprisingly there were a few games I tested that worked very well at 1080p with only 10 watts in silent mode and disabling that security measure actually made silent mode useful and while testing all of these games I had the brightness at 50% I turned the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth off and of course I only set the ROG Ally to silent mode but with the brightness Wi-Fi and Bluetooth set to off and 50% that helped me get an extra 15 to 20 minutes of game time. So let's start this list and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised what kind of numbers I got. So the first game I tested was Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition. I managed to get three hours out of this game by setting the resolution to 720p, locked 60 FPS. Somehow I got three hours with this and it is an older title that was on Xbox 360 and PS3. But don't forget, this is a specific port to PS4 and PC as well as Xbox One. So considering that, getting three hours on this while going 720p, 60 FPS because that's the same resolution that the consoles were set at. The next game I tried is of course Resident Evil 2 Remake, naturally. I really wanted to push it. So at 1080p, low to medium settings, at 90% resolution, I managed to get two hours and 45 minutes out of this title. It looked incredible and it played fairly well. The FPS was around 35 to 40. And don't forget, this is in silent mode. When knocking down the resolution to 720p, you get about 45 to 50 FPS with high settings. And that that's with the normal rendering method enabled. With the interlaced rendering method, you can reach up to 60 FPS with three hours of battery on the ROG Ally. And don't forget that is at 720p. 1080p could honestly vary from 2 hours and 30 minutes to 2 hours and 45 minutes, but most likely you're going to get 2 hours and 45 minutes out of this title, regardless. So you may as well just keep the resolution at 1080p, set the rendering method to interlaced, and have a good time. The next game I tried was Wanted Dead. A lot of people don't like this game, including myself, but there's something about it that makes me just want to play it portably. It just seems like a brain dead sort of shooter. And at 720p, low settings, locked at 30 FPS, I managed to get 2 hours and 45 minutes out of this title. For some reason, this hideous game requires a lot of graphical power, so this is all I could squeeze out of it. The next game I tried is something that you can't find on Steam, and that is Operation Raccoon City. I managed to get 3 hours 
hours out of this title at 1080p 30 fps you can get an extra 10 to 15 minutes if you bring the resolution down to 720p it'll still remain at 60 fps like with the 1080p setting variant and the settings at high and i remember this game back in xbox 360 days it wasn't very liked by a lot of people but the online mode was so much fun it was sort of a dead by daylight before dead by daylight and honestly it's a very underrated game considering what it did now the next title I tried was Death Stranding. Surprisingly, I managed to get three hours out of this title. I set the resolution to 720p, medium settings, and got a consistent 30 FPS. And this is only if you want to set all of these games to silent mode and don't want to mess with the TDP or anything like that. It's a simple process and you get plenty of battery life out of titles like Death Stranding. And the next game I mention frequently, and that is Ultra Street Fighter 4. I managed to get two hours and 30 minutes out of this game at 1080p, locked 60 FPS, and three hours and 720p resolution with again, locked 60 FPS. Playing this game for two hours and 30 minutes at 1080p, 60 FPS was pretty much something that dreams are made out of. It's an incredible experience, even in silent mode. And Ultra Street Fighter 4 isn't that old. The next game I tested, you can't find in the Steam store, and that is Gears of War 1. This game lasted 2 hours and 45 minutes at 1080p, locked 60 FPS. Somehow, I guess deactivating that security measure, which was memory integrity, made some kind of magic happen. Because at 720p, with a locked 60 FPS, Gears of War 1 lasts 3 hours and 10 minutes. And that's a great amount of time, especially to spend with a game as legendary as Gears of War 1. And that's the official PC port. Now the next game I tested is of course, Catherine Classic. This lasted two hours and 45 minutes at 1080p locked 60 FPS. And in some instances, the game can go up to 80 FPS, but limiting the FPS to 60 is recommended, especially if you want to save the most battery life. At 720p, 60 FPS, the game lasts about three hours and 20 minutes. So yeah, I'm gonna play this game a lot. The second to last title I tested was Metro 2033. This lasted two hours and 45 minutes at 1080p, 45 to 60 FPS. But because the VRR is always on, it smooths the FPS out a great deal. And at 720p, the game lasts three hours and 20 minutes at a pretty much locked 60 FPS and higher if you wanted to, but that's gonna affect your battery life. So try to keep it at 60. The final title I tested was Soul Calibur 6. I got two hours and 50 minutes with this game at 720p with the screen quality set to auto, just so you can get that 60 FPS or just a smooth frame rate. Because when you have the screen quality set to anything else at 10 watts in silent mode, you're most likely going to see a great deal of slowdown during gameplay. But yeah, those were the 10 games that I tested. And after disabling memory integrity, I was surprised with how much of a performance boost the ally got from that simple change. So that goes to show, with a tiny bit of research, I was able to get 10 to 15% of a performance boost. And that's all while using Windows 11. And it made me realize Windows seems to prioritize security measures over actual performance. And that proves Microsoft needs to rework their OS to better optimize it for gaming specifically. Because if toggling that simple option gave me such a performance boost with something that was supposed to be enabled with the OS, it just shows where their priorities are. And there is another option that you can disable, but I couldn't seem to find it. It's called TPM, which is a different kind of protection for malware, but it's connected to the license with your Windows 11. So I didn't want to mess with that too much or at all because I wanted Windows to continue to update. Some people disabled that and it seemed to get rid of the audio crackling that might take place during silent mode with certain games. But since it's connected to the Windows 11 license, I don't know if it's a good idea to toggle that on or off. It was supposedly in the BIOS, but I didn't see it anywhere. Maybe ASUS disabled the option to enable or disable it, who knows. But besides that specific option, you are able to tweak the settings here and there to get some performance boost. And regarding all the security measures that Microsoft throws at you, it's not really their fault to obsess over safety. Viruses have plagued the OS since the early 90s and onward. I'm just glad silent mode has finally become a viable option after switching around just that one setting. And if you're on the fence about disabling memory integrity, again, it's a tool mainly used to stop complex malware processes. If you're staying away from shady websites or anything like that, you have nothing to worry about. But just keep in mind you have to be extra safe with downloading or visiting certain websites if you disable that option. But yeah, with these settings, you'll end up getting a big performance boost 
in all performance profiles and that extra bit of battery life to boot. And hopefully with this video, all the Steam Deck stands can stop complaining about the RG Ally's battery life. Because with the settings and steps I showed you, you can most likely get the same battery life you would with the Steam Deck with certain games, but with even more resolution in some cases. But yeah, if you have any battery life fixes or hacks that you want to share with the RG Ally community, let us know in the comments down below. And also, if you know about that TPM option and how to decide disable it, let me know in the comments. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a good one. Later.